In this section, we introduce the FTP protocol principles as an application for support of file storage and management within Huawei Enterprise products. Early development of standards introduced the foundations of a file transfer protocol with the aim of promoting the sharing of files between remote locations that were not impacted by variations in file storage systems among hosts. The resulting FTP application was eventually adopted as part of the TCP IP protocol suite. The FTP service remains an integral part of networking as an application for ensuring the reliable and efficient transfer of data, commonly implemented for effective backup and retrieval of files and logs, thereby improving overall management of the enterprise network. This section therefore introduces the means for engineers and administrators to implement FTP services within Huawei products. So upon completion of this section, it is generally expected that trainees will be able to explain the file transfer process of FTP as well as configure the FTP service on supporting Huawei devices. The FTP server operates as a form of file repository that enables the backup and retrieval of files as and when they are needed by those with authority. In the case that events occur, such as the loss of a device in the network, it is possible to effectively replace the device and locate and retrieve the required VRP image for that device via FTP. Configuration files can also be stored within an FTP server as a preventative measure should the safe configuration of a device be accidentally erased. Log files of inactivity in FTP can also be monitored, and as such, log files retrieve from the FTP server to inspect activity. Communication between the client and server works on the principle of two connections. The first of these is the control connection that is established for communicating instructions. The control connection is established over TCP port 21, and communication occurs between protocol interpreters on the client and server. The user protocol interpreter is used to initiate the connection to the FTP server and once established will send FTP commands and interpret the received replies. The server protocol interpreter will interpret commands received from the client and respond accordingly, whilst also communicating with the data transfer process to establish the connection for initiating data transfer between the client and server. Once established, the server protocol interpreter will notify the client protocol interpreter of the port on which to listen, that is by default port 20 which will then be relayed to the data transfer process of the client. Communication may be performed using one of two transmission modes within VRP. These supported modes are referred to as ASCII and binary modes. For data that requires character information, such as carriage returns and line feeds, such as is found within text files, the ASCII format is required to be used. Where binary mode is applied, data is transmitted byte for byte and is associated with image file formats, as well as application files, such as VRP system image files. It is generally necessary that the transmission mode be defined before files are sent. As with many service features within VRP, the FTP service is required to be enabled before it can be configured. We demonstrate here the very simple command process that is needed to achieve this in the form of the FTP server enable command. Along with this, it is necessary to establish an FTP server default directory. This represents the default location in which files are stored. Should this not be configured, the FTP server will notify that an error has occurred when attempting to connect to the FTP server, stating that the user has no authority to any working directory. In this example, however, we have defined the SD1 storage location as the default FTP directory. The FTP service is able to support users through a number of means that allow for a common authentication method to be used for a group in which just a password is required, or for users to be individually authenticated based on a user ID. In this case, however, we see the latter, in which an individual user with the username of Huawei has been created, for which additional parameters are set, including the maximum number of connections a user can establish, the period of inactivity a user can maintain in minutes and seconds before a user is required to log in again, and the privilege level for the user. Incidentally, an idle timeout period of 00, zero will not close, no matter how long the connection is idle. The means to allow user-based login relies on AAA, which is introduced in more detail within the intermediate unit of this course. Following configuration of the user parameters, we can go ahead and attempt to log into the established FTP server remotely. We of course initially require that IP communication between the client and server be established before the FTP connection can be negotiated. This establishment to the FTP server is achieved from the user view using the command FTP followed by the address of the FTP server, which in this case is 172.16.1.1. If everything goes well, a connection to the FTP service within the FTP server will be established and the user requested to be authenticated, which in this case involves providing both the username and password 
based on the Huawei user account previously configured. Once successfully connected to the service, we will see the parenthesis change at which point FTP-based commands can be used in order to retrieve files. In this instance, we see a request to retrieve a system image file being made. In summary then for this section, we just have a couple of questions here. The first asks, which ports are required to be open in order to allow the FTP service to operate? Well, it is necessary by default that the TCP control connection and data connection ports 20 and 21 be open to allow the FTP service to be successfully established. A user is considered to have no authority to access any working directory. What steps are required to resolve this? Well, this occurs when the default FTP directory has not yet been defined. The directory is not set to any location by default and therefore will provide an error. We can set this using the set default FTP directory command followed by the location where the files are to be stored and retrieved from by default. 